Hi, and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson, we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking space tunnel effect using Adobe After Effects. So anyways, guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new composition. I'm just gonna run with a 1920 by 1080 pixel document. 30 FPS is fine and a duration of about five to 15 seconds. The shorter the duration, the less uh, CPU intensive uh, it's gonna be. So make sure you shorten it if you don't have a good CPU. Just press okay. So we're gonna start here with the mirror section. So I'm just gonna create a new solid. I'm gonna call it mirror. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for our effect called mirror three. Now mirror is a plugin from Red Giant. So if you do not have it, please make sure you download it before continuing on with this tutorial. So once we have that, now we need to change a few settings. So I'm just gonna open up the geometry. I'm gonna change the size to XYZ individual. And then I'm gonna bump up these values. So the size is why I'm gonna bump up to about 5,000 and the size X I'm gonna bump up to about let's say 4,000 and so now I've filled that entire screen I'm gonna come down to the rotate X I'm gonna change that to negative let's say 53 I'm also going to go to my vertices X and I'm gonna change that to let's say 175 and vertices Y I'm gonna change to about 300, 350, something like that. So now you have all these kind of squiggles on your page and it's looking pretty good. Um, but we're also gonna change the bend Y to 0.09. So now we have a slight curvature happening on our mirror plugin. The next thing that we need to do is we need to come down to the shader settings and we're just gonna change the draw to points. And then we are also going to increase uh, the point size to about three. And then what we are going to do is we're gonna go down to rendering and we're gonna put depth of field to our camera settings. And once we've done that, then we can actually create a camera. So I'm just gonna run with a 35 mil camera here. Just gonna press okay. I'm gonna open up the camera options and I'm gonna change a few things. So the depth of field, I'm gonna turn on. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play around with some of these values. I'm gonna bring the aperture down all the way down to zero. I'm gonna bring the blur level up to about 300%. And then I'm gonna play around with the focus distance. So I'm gonna bring that to about 2140 pixels. And then the zoom, I'm gonna bring down the zoom to let's say 117. And so now you've got this you know, cool looking, I don't know, orb thing in the middle with a lot of these particles coming out. So you can play around with some of these settings. So, you know, if you move around the zoom, you can see what is actually kind of happening. Then if you move around the focus distance, well, not much happens there, but once you start to add a bit of aperture, now you can see what's actually happening. So you can get some cool depth of field stuff happening there if you increase the aperture. And I'm pretty happy with that for now. So now I'm gonna go back into my mirror settings and we're gonna play around with some of these settings. So now we can go back to the size X and we can just increase that. So maybe I'll even increase that to about uh, 6,000. And so now we have a whole section of that um, composition covered. Then what we can do is we can actually move the position. So if you want to move where this thing is kind of uh, sitting, in the composition, you can. So you can move it around if you like. Um, and then you can play around with some of these rotate settings to get really cool and unique kind of uh, looks. But I'm not gonna touch uh, anything like that. So the only thing I'm gonna do is just maybe I'm gonna move uh, this just a little bit uh, down, just so it kind of sits you know, in the middle. Um, maybe something like, that. So now once we have that, then the next thing that we need to do is we need to go to our fractal settings and we're just gonna change a few things in here. So the first thing we're gonna change is the frequency. We're gonna set that to about 50. And you can see what happens here. Like you can get some really cool, unique looks by playing around with some of the frequency settings. I'm also going to change the amplitude. So I'm gonna bring that up to about 250 and that gives it that warped kind of uh, look. 
And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the individual amplitude and I'm gonna change some of these settings. So the X, I'm gonna change to about 25. Um, the Y, I'm gonna change to about 400-ish. Um, like you don't wanna go too crazy. And then you have the Z, which I'm just gonna drop back down to about somewhere near 40. And so now you've got this cool looking effect that's kind of happening here. And then what we're gonna do is to make this uh, move, we're going to animate the evolution. So I'm gonna option click or alt click the evolution. I'm gonna write time times 50 and that's gonna you know, make it kind of wobble and warp like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold option or alt click and click on the scroll Y and I'm gonna write time times 100. And so now if you've done that, now it's going to have that forward kind of movement. And I think that looks pretty good. So now what we need to do is we just need to go back to the material settings, all right? And we just need to increase the metal and reflectivity to about 80. Now, once we start to add a bit of glow and things like that, you're gonna get some really cool effects there. So that's pretty much the mere stuff done. The next thing that we need to do is we need to create the background. So I'm just gonna create a new solid. I'm gonna call it background, make sure it goes underneath. I'm gonna search for an effect called four color gradient. So now what I'm gonna do in terms of the colors, I want a really dark, background so I'm just gonna pick different shades of gray it doesn't really matter what the colors are just as long as they remain quite dark so there we have you know different shades of gray and all we have to do now is we are going to animate this so the first thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna move some of these uh, points around so I'm just gonna bring them a little bit closer together. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a new adjustment layer. And inside this adjustment layer, I'm going to search for turbulent displace. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the amount to 40 and I'm gonna change the size to 1000. And the complexity, I'm also going to bring up to about 10. Now you've got these, uh, you know, clipping inside the actual um, graphic there. So what we need to do is we need to fix that up. So I'm just gonna change this to a vertical displacement, all right? And so nothing really animates just yet, but we're gonna get it to animate. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to add some motion tile. And what the motion tile will do is it will fix up any of those um, imperfections. So I'm just gonna put it on top of the turbulent displace. I'm just gonna, you know, increase these sizes to about, you know, 300, 300. And then I'm just gonna mirror the edges. And so now there's no tears on any of that kind of stuff, which looks pretty cool. And then the next effect we're gonna put on here is CC smear. Now CC smear, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to change the reach to negative 100, and I'm also going to change the radius to 1000. So I'm just gonna bump that up. And now you've got like a curved kind of looking thing. And what we need to do is we just need to move some of these points. So I'm just gonna move uh, this point over here and just move that point over there. Now, you can't really even see what's happening because Mir is taking over, but if you take off Mir, you can see what is happening to these points. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna animate those two points. So I'm just going to um, hit, move to the start of the composition, hit the stopwatch, and then I'm gonna move to the end of the composition, and then I'm just gonna move it back around so it creates some kind of, you know, unique kind of looking movement. So now we've got this kind of wobble uh, thing in the background. And the next thing that we can do here is we can apply a twirl effect as well. So for the twirl effect, what we need to do is we're just gonna bump up the radius to about 50 and we can just play around with some of these settings here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna animate that. I'm gonna hit the stopwatch, move to the end of the composition and I'm just going to move it like 30 degrees. And so now you've got this 
cool, nice, you know, kind of twirling background in the background. And that looks pretty cool with the mirror happening. So now all we have to do is just dress up the mirror and have it ready for rendering. So now if going back to me, if you kind of want to fill that hole in, like for example, I'm just going to bring this down slightly. I can increase the size Y and now that will kind of fill in that gap over there. So you can play around with some of those settings, but it does affect the particles on the other side. Now, what's cool here is I'm just going to add some glow to this. So if I go into my glow settings and if I change the radius to about 80. So now we've got some cool looking glow on that. And also what I can do to this is I can add another red giant plugin, which is called Shine. And Shine basically, it creates a really nice effect on that trap code mirror. So if I just go and open the colorize and if I change the colorize to starry night. So now you've got this cool kind of effect, which is looking something like that. And so now if I preview that, you've got the particles moving forward. You've got that big glowing bit in the middle. And I think that looks pretty nice. So the final thing that we can do here is just add some noise. So if I add another new adjustment layer and if I add some noise on top of this, and if I bump that up to about 10%, now it really ties in to that look. So you can honestly play around with some of these settings and see what you can come up with. But anyways, guys, that's it for this short tutorial on how to create a space tunnel using Trapcode Mirror 3. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.